Hi, I'm Chris Naniga, the Director of Training Development at Swift Otter, and today I want to talk about big commerce. If you are rolling up your sleeves to start learning how to develop on the big commerce platform, then it's going to make a great deal of difference which of two camps you come from in terms of your development background. If you're used to developing multifaceted web applications with perhaps different tool sets for the front end and the back end, if you're used to composing together uh, web services in different ways, then you're probably going to be well equipped to hit the ground running pretty easily with big commerce. On the other hand, if you come from a back Background working with more traditional web frameworks that are full stack monoliths where you do all of your development in one place, then you're going to have some more hurdles to clear in terms of your mindset and the way you think about building your web application. And if you come from a, an e-commerce platform like Magento, like I do, then you're going to fall into that latter camp. BigCommerce is a SaaS platform, it's a hosted solution, meaning that from the perspective of a developer, all of the application code that makes it run under the hood is sealed behind a black box. Years ago, when my Magento-focused agency uh, planned to add big commerce to our repertoire, uh, my first question as a developer was, if I can't get at the code, where do I write my custom code to make custom things happen on our custom sites? Now, uh, Big Commerce calls itself the open SaaS platform, meaning that while all the benefits that come with SaaS are there, such as stability and lower total cost of ownership, uh, the, the SaaS model is not intended to inhibit the creation of truly dynamic custom shopping experiences uh, of accomplishing any custom functionality you want on your Big Commerce sites. It's built from the beginning to be a developer-friendly platform that offers uh, toolkits and expansive APIs for really accomplishing almost anything you want to do on your custom storefronts. It's just a question of adopting the right mindset. Developing for a big commerce site means on the one hand developing custom themes that are applied to your big commerce store, but then on the other hand developing web applications that work with big commerce and consume its services uh, to interact with the e-commerce functionality. So in a sense there really is no such thing as developing on big commerce there is just developing web applications and that is an enormous amount of freedom uh, if you're in one camp or something that's quite intimidating if you come from a different background uh, so if you come from a background like I do you can study documentation of big commerce's APIs in, into great detail learn all about the tool sets but then still be left with half the challenge being the question but what do I do with all that when I'm looking at trying to actually make some kind of functionality happen on my e-commerce store how do I use those tools to make it happen uh, so this video is going to be focused on the concept of starting to think in SAS and just starting to visualize certain scenarios and how they look in terms of how we are creating web applications for a big commerce store. We're going to walk through five different scenarios and just visualize uh, what they look like in terms of the tools and architecture that we would use to build them for a big commerce site. The first one is the simplest because scenario one is simply theme customizations. So I have the functionality that I need for my e-commerce store with what big commerce provides. I just need to give it a facelift and make the front end presentation my own. Uh, so this is the simplest scenario. Our big commerce store the SaaS platform is what our customers and admins are interacting directly with but to customize the front end I use the the code framework stencil that big commerce provides to develop my own custom theme code I'm probably going to clone the default big commerce theme to do that work in my own development environment to customize my code and what I have in the end is a bundled theme package that I then get to upload to my big commerce store and apply it directly uh, in in my admin this is probably the most comfortable workflow for those of us coming from a monolith web framework background where we're used to just managing all of our code in one place for scenario number two, let's say that we need to add some kind of backend only functionality to our web store. Let's say we have a custom ERP integration uh, that we need to, to uh, fetch orders periodically from our web store, process them, and then send them off to that ERP. 
uh, I can't get at BigCommerce's backend code to somehow make this happen, so what is my solution? This is where we build a separate web application, one that runs uh, separately from BigCommerce, uh, which I'm going to refer to as middleware here in the next couple of slides, that then simply uses BigCommerce's APIs to interact with BigCommerce and read and write data. Uh, so this is where we've cleared the the perhaps biggest hurdle in terms of changing our mindset as monolith developers when we start thinking about building our own web applications that simply interact with big commerce as a service and that's how we accomplish customizations to our web store rather than actually customizing the the web store's code itself for scenario number three, things get more complicated because more than likely we eventually will need to build custom functionality on our e-commerce stores that involves both front-end and back-end components. Something where we need a user interface that is customer-facing but which involves back-end functionality that is not provided by big commerce itself. Uh, so this is where we simply need a way for our front-end in big commerce to talk to our web application that is handling the back-end. Uh, so we make appropriate endpoints in our web application that the front end can talk to. And then in our big commerce theme, if let's say the entry point for our custom functionality is on the product page, then we can customize uh, the product page template in the theme. But even if we just need one dedicated place for our custom feature on our site, one dedicated entry point, we also have the ability to create custom templates in big commerce's theme structure and apply those to some specific page on our store. And that's where our client side of our uh, custom app application can live and then then can do what it needs to do to talk to our backend application our separate web application that we've built uh, either through posting form data or making Ajax requests or whatever the appropriate thing might be our web application is still on the back end talking to big commerce's APIs uh, to do the things that it needs to do and maybe has its own data storage uh, involved with the functionality that we need to build but it's our client side code in our big commerce theme that that is actually handling the user interface part and talking to our web application. Another option here is the BigCommerce Widgets API, which gives you the flexibility of creating widgets within your store, which in the admin interface can then be dropped in to create user interface wherever you please on your site. Our fourth scenario is if we need custom functionality in the BigCommerce admin. And honestly, there are other possible requirements that uh, certain custom functionality might have in terms of different kinds of access that it needs to BigCommerce's data that might result in this kind of architectural pattern too. Uh, but in this scenario, what we're talking about is now elevating our web application to a BigCommerce app. Uh, so what we're talking about here is in fact the way that all apps on the big commerce marketplace that can be uh, purchased from vendors and installed on your big commerce store how they are built we're still talking about a, a separate web application hosted on its own running separately from big commerce but in this case the application implements a certain OAuth workflow that enables it to be installed by an admin user on the big commerce uh, on the big commerce store uh, and authorized via that workflow to access uh, that big commerce store's data and the big commerce app can also provide uh, its own entry point uh, for for an admin interface that is then embedded directly in the admin panel in big commerce uh, that can make whatever whatever interface makes sense for your application available directly in that panel for admin users who are still interacting directly with the with the big commerce SaaS application and the fifth scenario really isn't specific to big commerce at all, but I include it just because it's interesting in our visualization here to kind of see the user uh, interaction invert here. Uh, but this is a full headless storefront. So we're talking, of course, about using big commerce in a fully headless capacity where customers are no longer interacting directly with your big commerce uh, hosted storefront at all, but rather you have built a custom storefront application that is simply using big commerce versus APIs uh, for the e-commerce functionality, likely alongside other services that you're consuming to provide various functionality for your headless application. 
if all of this seemed like a no-brainer to you, then you are probably used to building applications this way and are well prepared already for starting on your big commerce journey. If you come from that background of developing on the application monolith, uh, then just being able to visualize how we use all the tools together to accomplish custom web applications like this uh, is at least half the battle of starting to develop custom websites on BigCommerce. So if that's you, I hope you've found this useful, and I wish you luck on your BigCommerce development journey.